hope you're doing well. I'm super excited because today was such an awesome post day. I received not one but two parcels from my sponsors. The first one is a bike from Marin, but I'm going to show you that another time. Sorry to leave you waiting. But the other one was a giant parcel from Zip with these wheels in. So super excited to get these. They are Zip's brand new 303 Firecrest wheels. Uh, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you've probably seen that I use Zip 303s on both my road bike and my gravel bike. They've always been a fantastic wheel, but these ones are even better. So I'm gonna talk you through the main changes that they've made to the 303s, and I'm gonna tell you more about this really cool little device here the tire whiz and why it's going to be fun to use that on my first ride. So since Zip came out with the original 303s, people have slightly changed the way that they ride or changed the equipment that they prefer to use. So nowadays you'll find most people use disc brakes. So that's meant that Zip have been able to totally redesign the rim because they don't need to account for a braking surface. These days people often use slightly wider tyres, it's kind of standard to see people running 28C tyres on their road bikes. I remember when I first started doing that everyone was like what? Isn't that really really heavy? But now it's pretty normal. So to take that into account, plus the fact people might be riding gravel on these wheels, I will be, um, Zip have widened the internal rim width. So, whereas in the past the 303 was 45 mil deep, these are slightly shallower, they're 40 mil deep, and the internal rim width is, I'm gonna check my computer, just gotta check that I get this right, the internal rim width is 25 mil rather than 21 mil. The internal rim width being wider means that the tire can sit in a more round shape rather than being squeezed in that sort of light bulb effect. These rims are hookless, which you meet, ugh, these rims are hookless, which means you have a much smoother transition from the rim to the tyre and that disrupts the airflow less. That basically means they're more aero and you're going to go faster. When it <laughs> Can you see there's a tail waving in and out? <laughs> when it comes to rolling resistance, again, these have got an advantage. Because you have got a wider tire on, it actually means that the contact patch, the contact patch with the ground as you're rolling, is gonna be wider rather than longer as it would be with um, a narrower tire pumped up to a higher pressure. And because it's wider rather than longer, that means that you get over that contact patch more quickly. So you're actually gonna go faster. I told you it's all about going fast. The wheels are also lighter than their predecessors, which again means you're gonna go faster, at least you will go faster up hills. I think they're in the region of, I mean, almost half a kilo lighter. So the front one is 300 grams lighter than the old version, and the rear one is 155 grams lighter. So you're saving a lot of weight. The wheels come with a whole new hub set. This is called the ZR1DB. I can't believe I didn't remember that catchy name. But what's really cool about them is that they've got 66 points of engagement, so they have uh, an even quicker response. They use a center lock disc, which is really cool, because rather than having a bolt on one where you've got to fiddle with all those bolts, with these, you just slot the disc on and then do this up, so that's nice. Along with being light, comfortable, fast, and all those other desirable traits, the wheel set is also very durable, which I'm happy about because, yeah, if these go on my gravel bike, they need to be. I saw this really cool video that SRAM did where they were testing this wheel set against another top-end really good wheel set, the um, NV AR 4.5s, and basically, when you see this wheel set roll over like a really, really chunky block, you can see um, the energy of that impact, impact uh, dissipating throughout the whole wheel rather than there being a kind of shockwave through the spokes which causes the wheel to delam. So uh, these can actually withstand 28% um, higher impact energy without delamming than the Envy's. So let's look a little deeper into the subject of tyre pressure because that to me is what's really exciting about these new wheels. SRAM have done a load of testing into what is the most efficient tyre pressure to use when you're running these wider tyres on these rims and they have found some really, really interesting things out. I remember, you know, going back many years, 
many years, well actually going back several years, um, I used to run my tyres at 120 psi and it took a lot of convincing for me to understand that actually that wasn't faster than running them at say 80 psi. It's all to do with the um, micro imperfections in the road and if you're actually running your tyres really hard, rather than the tyre um, flexing and being able to deal with those little bumps it kind of skips over them so it might feel faster but it's not actually faster and it also really fatigues the person riding the bike SRAM have done this really cool power curve where you can see at what psi you're going to have to put out the fewest watts in order to go fast and what i found really really amazing is how low a tyre pressure they've recommended someone of my weight should start with. So I've very kindly been sent the wheels all set up with these uh, Quark Tyre Whiz special thingamajigs installed. Have a look. So a Tyre Whiz is um, a really cool device that measures your tyre pressure and you can connect it to um, your SRAM Axis app on your phone and also you can connect it to say your Garmin or your Wahoo and you can see as you're riding along what your tyre pressure is. You can set up an alert in case you go um, out of the range that you've decided you want to ride in which is really really cool because there are a whole bunch of factors that affect tyre pressure such as even temperature so you might set up your tyres at one pressure in the house and then go outside and it's freezing and find you've got something completely different. Here's a quick look at what that looks like. You can see that you have what pressure you're at and you can set a range at which you want it to stay. You can see here that you can set um, your ideal tyre pressure range and you can have alerts that go off if you go outside of that. You've also got this here, tyre pressure guide. So I'm going to go ahead and see what it says I should use. Let's have a look. Rider weight in pounds. I don't do it in pounds, I do it in kilos. Okay, rider weight, 56 kilos, ride style. Well, you've got all these different styles of riding. So I'm gonna put these on my road bike. So I'll select road for the time being. Bike weight, ooh, it's, they're gonna go on my Windy Miller. Probably weighs about eight or nine kilos, I don't know. I'll put eight and I'll weigh it later. Wheel diameter, 700. Front tire width, I've got, what have I got? <laughs> Sim sent me these wheels already set up. Yeah, they're 28. So front tire width, 28. Inner rim width, 25. Front tire casing, standard, standard rim type, uh, tubeless, straight side. Surface, dry. Well, that's a bit optimistic, looking outside the window. Oh my goodness, look what it's suggesting. That is insanely low. They suggested um, that I set my front tyre pressure at 48.9 PSI, less than 50 PSI. That is just mind blowing. Obviously this is just a guide, you still need to go out and test the tyre pressure um, in real situations because not all roads are created equal. Obviously things change such as the weather and you know, somewhere in the UK, I mean the roads are just completely different to somewhere with, well, good roads. So really looking forward to trying these. I am gonna go take them out, uh, test them on my road bike. We'll try some different tire pressures. I'll let you know how it feels. And then I think what's gonna be really exciting actually is to go try them on my gravel bike because that to me is where the tire was is gonna be really, really interesting because tire pressure on a road bike, okay, you know, it, it affects your efficiency, but tire pressure on a gravel bike is that much more important because it really, really massively affects your traction and handling and, and, and comfort so much more. So that's gonna be really interesting. Um, but I hope you found this first look um, insightful and if you've got any other questions about the wheels, do let me know. If you've got any suggestions for stuff I should do on my maiden voyage on them, then leave them below as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are well. I'll chat to you soon, bye.